China's rockets no longer launch from deserts or mountains. They launch from the moving sea, leaving SpaceX and NASA racing to catch up. In just five years, China built the world's most advanced ocean launch fleet, escaping decades of inland danger and rewriting the rules of global space power. How did they pull it off? And what does this new frontier mean for everyone else? China's first rocket bases rose far from the coast, hidden deep in the country's vast interior. Jiuquan, Taiyuan, Chichang, names carved into the hard ground of deserts and mountains. These sites were chosen in the 1960s, at the height of the Cold War, when secrecy and survival mattered more than convenience. Launches thundered skyward, but every flight carried a shadow. The flight paths arced over villages and farmland. Spent boosters and scorched debris crashed down with little warning. In Sichuan and Inner Mongolia, people learned to watch the sky not just for awe, but for danger. Old news footage and shaky phone videos show the aftermath. Twisted metals strewn across fields, villagers picking through rocket wreckage, children pointing at scars in the earth. Some families found their roofs caved in by falling stages. Others received compensation sometimes enough to rebuild, sometimes not. One villager standing beside a scorched crater said, we wait for the sound, then go out with our bikes to find the pieces. For decades, the risk was routine, but as China's ambitions grew, so did the cost of clinging to the past. Bigger rockets meant bigger debris zones. International attention mounted. The need for safer, more efficient launches became impossible to ignore. The answer lay far to the south, on an island ringed by palm trees and open sea. In 2016, Wenchang Space Launch Center opened on Hainan. It was China's first coastal spaceport, built not for secrecy, but for reach. Here, rockets could fly east over the ocean, their spent stages falling harmlessly into water. Wenchang quickly became the gateway for China's most important missions. The Tiangong Space Station, the Chang'e Lunar Landers, the Tianwen-1 Mars Probe. Every launch from this site carried the promise of progress without the old threat to those below. The move to Wenchang was more than a change of scenery. It was a solution to a problem that had haunted the program for half a century. By shifting the launch path from villages to open water, China turned risk into momentum. The future of rocketry, once anchored inland, now looked outward, toward the coast and beyond. At the edge of the Yellow Sea, the eastern aerospace port in Haiyang hums with a different kind of energy. Here, the launch pad is not a slab of concrete, but a fleet, massive vessels like Debo 3. Tai Rui, an Orient giant, each transformed into a floating command center. The workflow is seamless and compact. Rockets and satellites arrive at the port, where engineers assemble and test every component in climate-controlled halls. Giant cranes lift the finished boosters onto the decks, locking them into vibration-damped launch tables. Once the countdown begins, these ships slip their moorings guided by dynamic positioning thrusters that hold them steady against wind and current, sometimes as far as 300 kilometers offshore. Every system needed for flight, telemetry, tracking, mission control, travels with the vessel. The bridge doubles as a command center, with technicians monitoring weather feeds and range safety zones in real time. On deck, Solid-fueled rockets like the Smart Dragon 3 and Long March 11H stand ready. These vehicles are built for speed and simplicity. No cryogenic tanks, no complex fueling lines, no days-long pad preparations. The solid propellant is inert until ignition, allowing for rapid turnaround and minimal risk during transport. 
From integration at port to launch at sea, the entire cycle can unfold in a matter of days. The engineering behind these platforms is as precise as it is robust. Ballast tanks and active stabilization systems keep the deck level, even in swells of over a meter. The launch table itself is isolated by hydraulic dampers, absorbing the shock and vibration of ignition. Exhaust trenches and flame deflectors channel the blast safely away from the vessel, while water deluge systems cool the deck and suppress acoustic waves. Every detail is designed for repeatability. One launch, then another, then another, without returning to land for major overhaul. This is not just a technical achievement. It is a logistical revolution. The port acts as a turnkey spaceport, integrating assembly, command, and launch on a mobile platform. As engineer Li Tong Yu explained after the first successful sea launch, compared with land launches, sea launches support a much wider range of orbital inclinations and launch windows. We can select launch points flexibly according to mission needs, which greatly improves our ability to launch satellites into specific orbits. The result is a system that operates beyond the limits of geography, ready to send payloads skyward from wherever the mission demands. In 2020, SpaceX quietly acquired two retired oil rigs off the Texas coast, naming them Phobos and Deimos. The plan was ambitious. Transform these steel giants into floating launch pads for Starship, capable of sending rockets to orbit from the open sea. Each rig costs less than $10 million, a bargain compared to the price of a single Falcon 9 launch. Elon Musk announced the project with characteristic optimism, promising a new era of offshore launches. But the challenges piled up. Converting deep water rigs for cryogenic methane rockets proved far more complex than anticipated. Regulatory hurdles, engineering demands, and the relentless pace of Starship development on land stretched resources thin. By early 2022, SpaceX leadership confirmed the offshore project was on hold. In 2023, both rigs were sold and towed away. Musk's explanation was blunt. Too much distraction right now, we'll revisit later. The dream of American sea launches faded into archived tweets and abandoned blueprints, while the Atlantic waves rolled quietly beneath empty decks. Every launch from the open sea unlocks a new dimension of power. By moving platforms hundreds of kilometers offshore, China isn't just escaping the limits of geography, it's gaining access to any orbital path at any time. Azimuth maps from recent missions show a remarkable range. Sun-synchronous, equatorial, and low-inclination orbits, all reached without costly maneuvers or diplomatic hurdles. A maritime law scholar describes it as the ultimate freedom of movement. No fixed range, no overflight restrictions, no need to negotiate with neighbors. Yet that freedom is not without friction. Each launch triggers a web of legal notices. No TAMs for pilots, not Mars for ships, exclusion zones stretching across waters claimed by multiple nations. In 2022 and 2023, Malaysia and Vietnam filed public statements and advisories after Chinese launches sent debris zones near their exclusive economic zones. While these protests stop short of formal diplomatic notes, the tension is real. A policy analyst puts it simply, every sea launch is also a message. China can project capability anywhere and the rules at sea are still being written. The distinction between EEZ and high seas becomes more than a legal technicality. It becomes a stage for quiet competition, where each ignition tests the boundaries of both physics and policy. By 2024, China's ambitions at sea had only accelerated. The debut of Gravity One, a solid-fueled giant able to lift 6.5 tons to low Earth orbit, signaled a new scale of maritime capability. Launches now came in quick succession, 
with the Eastern Aerospace Port supporting a tempo that rivaled any fixed site. Each successful flight reinforced the system's promise, high cadence, adaptable, and untethered from land. But the ocean brings its own uncertainties. In December 2022, a Smart Dragon 3 mission faced a sudden weather front. High winds and heavy swells forced a launch hold, with stabilization teams working against the clock to keep the platform within safe limits. The countdown paused, waiting for a break in the sea. Even with dynamic positioning and advanced dampers, the ocean can dictate its own schedule. Environmental questions linger. Solid fuel boosters leave residue, perch laureate and aluminum oxide, falling with spent stages into the water. Some hardware is recovered, but much of it sinks, its long-term impact unmeasured. A former range safety officer put it plainly, you can move risk off the land, but you never make it disappear. At sea, the hazards just change shape. The scale is undeniable, but so are the unknowns. By 2024, China's sea-based rockets have launched more than a dozen times from mobile platforms, using vessels like Debo-3 and Tai Rui to by pass the hazards of inland sites such as Xichang and Taiyuan. Archival evidence confirms that debris from earlier land launches caused repeated damage in rural areas, prompting the shift to coastal sites. Wenchang in 2016, and then the fully integrated Eastern Aerospace Port. The documentary shows how solid-fueled vehicles like Smart Dragon 3 and Long March 11H enabled quick-turn launches at sea, while SpaceX's Phobos and Dimos rigs were bought in 2020 and quietly sold by 2023. Yet, key details remain classified. The full extent of China's launch cadence plans and how environmental risks at sea will be addressed. What is clear? Sea launch mobility now gives China direct access to a range of orbits, as confirmed by 2022 to 2023 diplomatic protests from neighboring countries. The global space race has shifted. Operational control is no longer anchored to the land, but moves with the open ocean.